As our introduction to water quality, we're going to start with the very basics. And that means revisiting the good old water cycle. The hydrologic cycle begins with precipitation falling to the earth in the form of rain, sleet, or snow. As this water falls, some of it evaporates back into the Earth's atmosphere. Of the water that does reach the Earth's surface, some becomes surface runoff over the ground and some infiltrates into the soil, becoming groundwater or soil moisture. The groundwater may percolate into natural underground reservoirs or aquifers be released by transpiration through vegetation or seep back into a surface water. The combination of evaporation and transpiration, called evapotranspiration, takes the water back into the atmosphere where it cools and condenses into clouds, which will then re release the water as precipitation all over again. Next, let's take a look at watersheds. What are they? They are the areas of land that collect and drain all the precipitation, both the surface runoff and the groundwater, to a common water body or outlet, such as a stream, river, or lake. Note how water flows with gravity from high to low points in the landscape, where it collects to form these water bodies. Watersheds are important because they're defined large areas that are capturing the precipitation and helping to recharge the water supply through groundwater infiltration and surface water runoff. But also, as the water moves across the land, the water picks up contaminants and chemicals which form the basis for surface runoff pollution. The land topography can dramatically impact the amount of runoff pollution. For example, steep elevation drops can accelerate the flow of water thereby causing more erosion and potentially more runoff pollution. When we're talking about watersheds, we may be talking about areas of all different sizes. The United States Geological Survey created a hierarchical system of hydrologic units. Each unit was assigned a unique hydrologic unit code, or HUC. The number of digits in the code indicates the relative size of the area with less digits actually being larger. Additional digits indicate that a smaller watershed is nested within the larger drainage area. There are six levels in the hierarchy represented by hydrologic unit codes from two to 12 digits long called regions, subregions, basins, subbasins, watersheds, and subwatersheds. When we use the word watershed, we're not typically using this technical definition of a HUC 10, but the area of land that drains to a common point or water body in general. As we discuss water quality, we'll be considering its chemical, physical, and biological characteristics. We'll be comparing these conditions to scientifically determined standards that protect human health, ecological conditions, and the other ways that we use water. Water quality is affected by two basic factors, the water itself and its environmental or physical setting. The water itself can be influenced by the climate and weather, the hydrology, and the hydraulics, or how the water flows from one point to another. The environment or physical setting describes the area that the water flows over, under, and through. It's affected by the geomorphology of the area or the physical features of the underlying Earth's crust, the land use of the area, and the vegetation and organisms that are in a watershed and the water bodies themselves. The study of water quality is multidisciplinary and the different disciplines affect how we might look at streams, rivers, and lakes. For example, an ecologist might look at a stream, the one on the left, and examine the biodiversity of the macroinvertebrates, the microhabitats where they might live, and whether or not the water quality is suitable for aquatic life. In contrast, a hydrologist might look at a stream more like as drawn on the right, where he or she sees water velocity, the cross-sectional area, shear stress on the stream banks and stream bed, 
and the size of the substrate in the stream. Each are simplifying in their own way in order to understand how the waters will respond under different conditions. In this course, we want to give an overview of how to look at a stream or lake and become familiar with a broad range of relevant measurements and principles of water quality. In 2012, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife and EPA released a document called Function-Based Framework for Stream Assessments and Restoration Projects. This document provides a framework for understanding how various stream functions are related to one another in a pyramid-like structure, with higher functions being supported by lower, more basic functions. Note that geology and climate form the base of the pyramid with steps up the pyramid, including hydrology and hydraulics, geomorphology, physicochemical, and bi biological. In our lessons, we'll be climbing up this pyramid and examining how to think about various functions contributing to water quality. First, we'll briefly review the functions in order to provide orientation for the information to come. We'll start by discussing how climate can impact stream functions and water quality. Climate change can increase our risks for both heavy rains and extreme droughts because water vapor concentrations, clouds, precipitation patterns, and stream flow patterns are all affected by temperature. Let's start with the clouds. With warmer weather, clouds hold more water vapor. This leads to more severe storms, but a decrease in lighter precipitation. Severe storms with heavy precipitation and rapid runoff do not recharge the groundwater as effectively as slow, steady rainfall, thus also causing reduced soil moisture levels. Together with the warmer temperatures and increased evaporation, this can lead to more severe droughts. Heavy storms can also cause increased runoff of sediment and other pollutants, and higher water temperatures can further increase the development of algae, which can threaten the ecological balance of a water body. Thus, climate affects how water flows through the hydrologic system and the resultant water quality. We will now turn the pyramid upside down and begin to take a more in-depth look at the base functions of hydrology and hydraulics, and then we'll proceed towards the top in the subsequent lesson. 